Hi, Jeremy here with 3D Universe. Today we're taking a look at the Dremel LC40 laser cutter. This is a 40 watt CO2 laser cutter and engraver, and it's a great solution for either small businesses that might want to start producing custom products or doing product customization, or maybe schools or maker spaces or libraries that want to open up a new range of project possibilities for their students or community members. Today we're going to take a look at the hardware and the software features that make this a really nice and unique solution. Now, the first thing I'll point out is that being a Dremel product, it has gone through an extensive QA and testing process. They've put this thing through over 20,000 hours of endurance and reliability testing. And so you can be assured that you're going to have a reliable product that you can run continuously without having issues. It's also the first desktop laser cutter on the market to offer Underwriter Labs safety certification, which might be important, especially in some of the educational types of environments that I mentioned. The solution comes with everything that you need to get started, the laser cutter itself, obviously, as well as this smaller unit over here called the hex box. That unit provides both the water cooling for the laser tube, as well as something called air assist, which helps to prevent any flare-ups while you're cutting. So those are both important safety features, as well as helping to ensure continuous runtime to prevent overheating. It also includes the tubing and connectors that you need to attach it to either an existing ventilation system, or if that's not available, you can vent it out a window. If you are venting out a window, I recommend that you take advantage of the optional booster fan that you can purchase separately. Another option that they offer is a BOFA fume extractor unit. So if you don't have access to outside ventilation, you can purchase the BOFA fume extractor, which would sit underneath the table and can provide filtration for any fumes produced while you're working with the laser cutter. Now keep in mind, if you do opt to use the BOFA fume extractor, that does add to the ongoing maintenance cost because there's two separate types of filters inside that unit that need to be replaced regularly. The LC40 has a work area that is 12 by 20 inches. There's a wide range of materials available in that size that are suitable for use with the laser cutter. It also has a large touchscreen display, making it easy to access all the information and controls you need. Before you can start any job, the machine runs through a series of safety checks to make sure that everything is ready. It checks to make sure the water cooling is working properly, the air assist, the ventilation, make sure that the lid is properly closed, and that you've acknowledged that you've properly adjusted the laser head, the material is good for the laser, and that you're going to remain at the machine during the job. The LC40 allows you to set which type of ventilation you're using, whether you're relying on the onboard fan or using external ventilation like the BOFA unit. If you select the external system option, the LC40 will not allow you to start a job until it detects that the BOFA unit is turned on and working. You can also configure your networking options, either wireless or wired connections, and one of these is required in order to access the software on the LC40. However, because the software is hosted on the machine itself, you do not have to have an internet connection in order to use the LC40. As I mentioned, before each job starts, you do need to make sure that the laser head is properly adjusted. But this is a very quick and easy process, only takes a few seconds. Place your media into the work area, and you use this small puck that's provided with the LC40. Place that under the laser head, loosen the adjustment knob up top, and then tighten it back down when the head is at the right height. And here we see the LC40 in action. This is a cutting job. Here we're cutting eighth inch birch plywood. And here you see a scoring operation. As you can see, it can move a lot more quickly when it's scoring. You can go ahead and let the sound run for a moment so you can hear how it sounds in operation. And here we see an example of engraving. As you can see, it's a little bit different. Instead of tracing the lines of vector artwork, it's going back and forth, kind of like an inkjet printer does, engraving as it goes. I'm doing a very simple image here, but you can do things like photos where different parts of the image would be lighter or darker, and the software can adjust the intensity of the laser in order to achieve that effect. To get a better sense of the kinds of things you can do with the LC40, be sure to check out our other video, Dremel LC40 Project Examples. We'll include a link below this video. For now, we're going to move on and take a look at the software. So here we have the Dremel DigiLab software that is embedded on the LC40 laser cutter. So you just access this through your web browser using the IP address, which you can get from the laser cutter itself through the touch panel. 
So going through the menu here, first up is uh, import, which gives you access to importing files, which would be your graphic design files for what you'd like to cut or engrave. The software uh, handles vector as well as image files. So if you're cutting, you'd want to use a vector file, such as an SVG or a PDF. And if you're engraving, you can use image files, such as PNG or JPEG or PDFs. So it depends on what you're looking to do. You can import multiple files, of course. And then this is also where you have the camera capture feature, which I will come back to in a short while. You have an undo and redo option, and then the auto array feature, which is a very powerful tool. So when you import a file, I'll just import a primitive here, like a star figure. And if I wanted to cut a whole bunch of this shape, Instead of having to import it many times and lay each one out, you can just select that object, go to Auto Array, select how many you want in each direction, and instantly have them laid out for you. So it's a great time-saving tool. The Materials Library is another powerful part of the Dremel Laser Cutter solution. So their software includes ready-to-use profiles for a wide range of different types of materials, the most common ones, and you can select the material that you're using, choose the width, in this case birch plywood, eighth inch, and it will automatically set all the correct settings for you. So if I select an object here and look at the settings, it's all set up for me. The heat level, the speed, the depth, the number of passes, all of that has been pre-configured based upon the material that I'm using. You do, of course, have the ability to customize those settings as needed, and their material library allows you to easily add new materials. So if you have something else that you're working with that's not in the library, you can easily build your own custom profiles. You could start with something, if you have it available, that might be sort of similar. You can copy that profile, and then you can customize the settings from there, give it your own name, and save it for future use. The next button here that says Time is for getting an estimate of how long your job is going to take. So, for example, in this case, if I was to cut out all of these objects, it would take about 18 minutes. Options gives you access to some settings, such as the units that you're using, the positioning, whether it's absolute or relative. You can turn the ruler and the grid on or off, and you can turn snapping on and off. The Run Perimeter tool is a handy way of making sure that everything that you've laid out for your job is going to fit within the media that you're using. So what this will do is have the laser cutter start to move the tool head around the perimeter of your job using a red sighting dot that you can see as it moves around so that you can actually spot if it's going to go outside of the boundaries of your media at any point. So that's a nice way of checking things before you start to make sure you don't waste any material. And then once you have everything set up, you can click on Start to get your job going. It'll show you all the different objects, and it'll indicate whether it's a cutting job or an engraving job by the icon on the right there. Once everything looks good, you can go ahead and send that to the cutter. Then you have to go over to the laser cutter, and use the touch panel to check to make sure everything is ready, and then start the job. I'm going to go ahead and remove these. You can easily rename your projects and then you can save them and it creates a bin file which contains all of your objects, designs, settings, everything so you can easily open it and resume later. And the laser cutter itself stores your most recent projects within its internal memory so you can access those right from the touch panel without ever having to go to the software. You can create your designs using any vector artwork program such as Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, or other vector artwork programs including some free options that you can find online. When you create your designs, keep in mind that color is important because color is how the software determines where to apply different settings. So if you have one part of your design that you want to be a cut and another part that you want to be a score, use different colored lines and then you can assign different settings to those different colors. So to demonstrate this, let's open a few simple vector objects. So here's a black circle. And here's another sort of a zigzaggy circle that's sort of a magenta color. And here we have a blue star. So now because these are different colors, we have separate settings for each one. You'll notice that the software shows the color here of the object that we have selected. And now we can select our settings for each one. So for the black circle, let's say I want to cut that out. Let's move this on top of that and say we want to score that into our circular object. 
And let's score the star too, but let's say we want that star to be a deeper score. So what we can do is increase our heat. We could slow down the speed a bit. And that'll give us a deeper cut. Now if I select my zigzag circle, you'll see that the settings are still set to what we had before for that. So it's storing individual settings for each object according to the color. So you can bring in different objects of different colors and set different settings for each one depending on what you want to do, whether it's a cut or a score or engraving, and you can combine those and overlay them to achieve your desired result. Now let's take a look at this camera capture feature that I mentioned earlier. This is probably my favorite feature of the platform. I use it all the time and find it to be really powerful. So to show you how this works, I'm going to take this circular piece of 8 inch birch plywood that I previously cut out with the laser cutter, and I'm just going to put it here in a, sort of a random position within the work area. Then we're going to go back to our software here and click on the camera capture option. And now what it's doing is taking a series of images using the camera that's mounted on the tool head, and it's going to stitch those together for us automatically to give us one view of the entire work area. I'll go ahead and speed this up a bit. And now as you can see, we have one continuous view of our entire work area. And there's our circular piece of wood in the corner. So now I'm going to go ahead and import a piece of vector artwork that we can lay on top of this and use to do a scoring around the outer edge. So we're just going to bring in a simple circle here. And we'll move it over so that it's overlapping our piece of wood. Shrink it down a little bit so that it's just slightly smaller. And I'm going to center it best I can. Okay, that's about as good as I can get it. Now we're going to click here to go to the settings. It's already on birch plywood, so it already has all the correct settings, but I don't want to cut in this case. I want to score. I just want to score that circle into the outer edge and see if it's well lined up in the center of the piece of wood. So we'll go ahead and start this job. And now we can go over to the laser cutter to get it started. So here we are getting the job going. And here we are scoring our circle. As you can see, that did a really nice job. So the smart camera feature is highly accurate in terms of positioning precision. I hope you found the video useful. I've got a whole series planned for the LC40 laser cutter. The next one will be about how to find resources online to help you with your laser cutter projects. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can catch those other videos as they become available. If you have any other questions, be sure to reach out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.